thank you all so much for coming out today. Uh, looks like we're getting a bit of a reprieve from the rain here. Uh, I'd like to begin, uh, before we get started, just by acknowledging uh, that this event is taking place on the unceded territory of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh nations on whose lands TransLink is absolutely so proud to work, to operate, and to serve every day. Uh, so good morning, my name is Kevin Quinn, TransLink's uh, CEO, and today is such an exciting day uh, for this organization, but most importantly, today is an exciting day for accessibility in Metro Vancouver. Uh, I've got to say, of all of the different initiatives and projects happening at TransLink since I started here, I cannot think of a single project that will substantially enhance accessibility more on our system than the initiative we are launching here today. For those who are blind or partially sighted, I don't have to tell you how essential it is that we upgrade our transit system and make it easier to navigate. But for people who may not have thought about it before, there is a major need to improve transit for members of our community with sight loss. And so through years of engagement, we know that for someone who has sight loss in Metro Vancouver, there is no real way to tell the difference between a regular city pole on the street and a typical bus stop pole. And once at that pole, not only would the person have no way to independently know they're at a bus stop, they'd have no way to know which buses they're waiting for or if they're at the right stop. And that's why I'm so honored to say that we found a way to help people who are blind or partially sighted more confidently and independently navigate our transit system. So starting today, we're beginning the installation of braille signage across the entire Metro Vancouver bus system. That's 8,400 bus stops across the system. And by this time next year, we will be the first transit agency in Canada to install braille signage system-wide. In addition, every bus stop on TransLink-owned property will have tactile walking surface indicators installed on the ground to help our customers with sight loss find those bus stops in the first place. I can't stress this enough. These signs may seem like a small addition to some, but we know through years of engagement and listening to the community that these signs will make a big difference in giving people with sight loss confidence and independence when taking transit in Metro Vancouver. And that's really what today is all about. Making sure that everyone in Metro Vancouver can confidently and independently access our transit system whenever they need. So many people have worked tirelessly and put in the hours to make today a reality, but there are a few I wanna thank in particular. I would like to thank uh, Richard Marion, who I know is in the crowd today. Richard is a TransLink employee with sight loss that has advocated for this change for many years and has not only helped us get here today, but has made sure that we got it right. And so Richard, I do wanna take a moment to thank you for your guidance and your dedication. I also uh, want to take a moment to thank every member of the Access Transit Users Advisory Committee, many of whom are here with us today. If you are on the committee or have ever been on the committee, uh, please put up your hand. I know there are some folks here today. Uh, thank you for your work in ensuring the products we're installing will benefit those who use them. Uh, let's give them a round of applause too, absolutely. And you're going to hear from them in just a moment, but I do want to thank the uh, three people up here with me. Uh, first, Andy Ross, who is representing TransLink's Board of Directors. Andy, thank you uh, and the board for prioritizing this initiative, seeing its value, seeing how this project will benefit the people of the region, and ensuring this project got approved and implemented. Uh, so thank you and the entire board for your leadership. To Sarah Ross, uh, TransLink's Director of System Planning, Sarah has been absolutely integral to hearing the voices of the Access Transit Users Advisory Committee, hearing the voices of the blind and partially sighted community and developing the policy to get us where we are today. She has championed this project and has never given up on the vision of making transit a more accessible place for those with sight loss. So th Sarah, thank you. And finally, Rob Sleeth, a member of our Access Transit Users Advisory Committee, a true champion for this change and someone who has encouraged us and shown us just how important these changes are every step of the way. So Rob, it is an honor to be standing up here with you. 
uh, and thank you for helping make Metro Vancouver a better place. Thank you, Rob. So. Uh, thank you all for being here as well. Uh, thank you for being here to help us mark this major milestone for transit accessibility. And with that, it's my absolute pleasure to introduce Andy Ross, who is here on behalf of the TransLink board. Thank you. Good morning and thank you, Kevin. Um, as Kevin said, my name is Andy Ross and I'm here representing the TransLink board of directors and we're delighted to be here for this uh, important announcement. It's a huge effort installing 8,400 signs across our metro region, um, but it's a critical step as well. Doing what we need to do to make this region accessible for all of our users, regardless of the obstacles placed in the way. It was back two years ago in December that this issue was raised to the board level. And we heard from many of the public about the difficulties and challenges uh, not having access for those with vision limitations to access our system. So I know I was touched, our board was touched with hearing those personal stories. And on a personal note, it was actually 40 years ago this month, I started as a city bus driver in this city. And I remember the difficulties of people traveling through the system back then when accessibility was not a consideration. So those people that came forward and spoke so eloquently and informed us on the difficulties were critical to getting us to this point. But we also know that accessibility is a continuous process. This is a great start, but it is just a start. We will be doing more and more to make uh, accessibility for all of our customers all across the region going forward to make Metro Vancouver the most accessible transit system in Canada. So I want to thank Sarah for bringing this to the board's attention. And Rob, who I've met on a number of occasions, thank you for your insight and showing us in real terms what these changes could mean. And echoing Kevin's word, the user advisory committee has been invaluable. As few of us on the board have had the uh, pleasure to go out with them and see in the real world what the difficulties in transportation are, uh, hearing their reasons and rationales, and I'm just so proud that we can bring it to this day and start the implementation. So once again, on behalf of TransLink Board of Directors, thank you for being here. Thank you for all of you who have done so much work to make it possible. I'd now like to introduce Sarah Ross, as you know, the TransLink's Director of Systems Planning, to share her perspective. Thank you very much. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, everyone, for being here. I'm Sarah Ross. I am so excited about today. Over the time I've gotten to work on this project, I have been truly moved by the need to modernize our transit system for the blind and partially sighted community. It's been a long road to get here, and I am incredibly proud to be standing here today to mark such an important milestone in Metro Vancouver. And it's a true honor to be joined today by some of our customers who are blind and partially sighted, and to be standing up here with Rob Sleeth. Rob, and the others here today, you have truly helped me understand what being able to travel independently truly means. Rob's always told me that he can do everything in his power to be independent, but at some point, the environment around him needs to change to truly level the playing field. And Rob's voice has echoed throughout the community. After a robust engagement period with TransLink's Users Advisory Committee, consultation with several community groups, and surveys sent to over 6,000 community members with sight loss, we have heard you, we have listened, and we are delivering. I want to take this opportunity to demonstrate what's on the signage. The signs we're putting at the bus stops convey four very important pieces of information in both unified English Braille and raised tactile lettering. First, in the top, so I'm holding up the sign right now. This, is, this sign is made of etched zinc. It's pretty heavy, actually. First, in the top right corner, this sign lets people know that they've reached a bus stop, and whether they're at a traditional bus stop or at a bus bay. Uh, and in that case, which, what is the bay number? In this sign I'm holding, it says bay two. 
Second, in the, second, in the top left corner, it says exactly which stop the customer has arrived at. And this unique identifier can be used to access bus arrival information via text message or confirm that you're at the exact right bus stop based on the trip planning you did uh, before heading out. Third, the sign will list every bus route number, uh, the, not the, the sign lists the bus route number of every route that services the particular stop. And below that, the telephone number to call to reach our customer information line for further assistance. In addition to these signs, we will also be in installing tactile walking surface indicators at every bus stop on TransLink owned properly, property. These are similar to the bumps I'm standing on the ground right now, but have uh, been updated based uh, with a, to a more modern standard based on what we've learned through engagement. I'm holding up a sample of a tactile walking surface indicator now. And these yellow raised uh, surface indicators have here will be mounted on the ground in front of bus stops on TransLink property to help customers who are blind or partially sighted know that they are uh, near a bus stop and to direct them to the front of door of the bus and help them load and also find the pole and find the braille sign on the pole. These may seem like small changes, but they will have a great impact in making our transit system more accessible and more inclusive. And with that, I'd like to invite Rob Sleeth to say a few words. Rob is a longtime member of our Access Transit Users Advisory Committee, an advocate and a champion for all people with disabilities and someone who has taught me so much. Rob. Thank you. One of the uh, disadvantages to being the fourth speaker this morning is that everybody that's come up here before me has said everything I want to say. Good morning, everybody. My name is Rob Sleeth, and I do want to add to some of the comments that have already been made. When I lost my, uh, my sight back in 1992, I quickly came to realize, as Sarah said a moment ago, that it wasn't my loss of sight that was my cause of disability. It was truly the environment around me. And I came to realize that if we change the environment, we can minimize my disability. Nothing more stood true than the day I went out and took my first ride on a transit bus having lost my sight. And as Kevin said a moment ago, uh, it's very difficult for somebody who's blind or partially sighted to identify a bus stop uh, versus a municipal parking sign pole. And that was my experience when I took my first ride on a public transit bus after I lost my sight. I discovered partway through my trip that I was on the wrong bus and that the bus I was on wasn't heading anywhere near where I wanted to go. Of course, that was before TransLink installed the automated stop announcements on the bus system which made it even more accessible for those of us who were blind or partially sighted. I decided at that point that I needed to do everything that I could to try and change the environment, particularly with the public transit system. And that's when I started to align myself with different advocacy groups, get to know the management at TransLink and do what I could to try and make the system more accessible. So many years ago, I came up with the idea that it was time to make it uh, to the point where individuals who were blind or partially sighted could travel independently and confidently on the transit system. Today marks a milestone, and it's more than just a sign on a pole. People who are blind or partially sighted, we rely almost 100% on the public transit system to get around our community. And now we are able, with these signs installed on the ID poles, 
to be able to travel even further than we did in the past. Because now I can travel into North Vancouver, I can travel out to Maple Ridge or Surrey, areas that I'm not even familiar with, and be confident that I'll be able to find the bus stop to return home uh, to where I started from. So like I say, this is more than just a fancy sign on a pole. It's really our gateway to further independence in using the public transit system. Before I step back, I would like to thank Kevin Quinn and his team. I know I shouldn't do this because I'll probably forget a couple of names here, but I do want to thank a retired gentleman, Jim Daw, who was the first to hear me talk about uh, braille and tactile signs on these ID poles. Hansel Wang, and uh, 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 pardon me, uh, um, inherited this project. Uh, Harjeet uh, Campo Sandu uh, inherited the project. Wisdom Chan did a marvelous job. But the one individual that I would recognize and is here today, the woman that knocked the ball out of the ballpark, is Sarah Ross. And, Ro and Sarah, I really want to thank you for all you did internally to get the board to get the management of TransLink behind you and to hear what we were saying in terms of making the system more independent for us. So I appreciate very much what TransLink's doing here. This is a huge step forward for those of us who are blind or partially sighted. And I really want to thank everybody who was involved in getting this to happen today. Thank you so much.